Democratic centralism is a democratic practice in which political decisions reached by voting processes are binding upon all members of the party. In practice In party meetings, a motion new policy or amendment, goal, plan or any other kind of political question is proposed. After a period of debate, a vote is taken. If one vote clearly wins gaining 60% or above share if two options for example all participants the party are expected to follow that decision, and not continue propagandizing or otherwise working against it, aiming to act in unity. If participants still disagree, instead of splitting and forming another party as in representative democracy they are expected to table a motion for discussing the issue again. In the development of socialism in Russia and China, it was largely taken up in response to dramatic developments and violence which required faster mechanisms of making decisions. A constellation of practices surround this in order to encourage participation and debate, such as don't blame the speaker. <laughs> Vladimir Lenin's conception and practice The text What is to be done, from 1902 is popularly seen as the founding text of democratic centralism. At this time, democratic centralism was generally viewed as a set of principles for the organizing of a revolutionary workers' party. However, Vladimir Lenin's model for such a party, which he repeatedly discussed as being democratic centralist, was the German Social Democratic Party, inspired by remarks made by the Social Democrat Jean Baptista von Schweitzer. Lenin described democratic centralism as consisting of freedom of discussion, unity of action. The doctrine of democratic centralism served as one of the sources of the split between the Bolsheviks and the Mensheviks. The Mensheviks supported a looser party discipline within the Russian Social Democratic Labour Party in 1903 as did Leon Trotsky, in Our Political Tasks, although Trotsky joined ranks with the Bolsheviks in 1917. The Sixth Party Congress of the Russian Social Democratic Labour Party Bolsheviks held at Petrograd between 26 July and 3 August 1917 defined democratic centralism as follows That all directing bodies of the party, from top to bottom, shall be elected. That party bodies shall give periodical accounts of their activities to their respective party organizations. That there shall be strict party discipline and the subordination of the minority to the majority. That all decisions of higher bodies shall be absolutely binding on lower bodies and on all party members. After the successful consolidation of power by the Communist Party following the October Revolution and the Russian Civil War, the Bolshevik leadership, including Lenin, instituted a ban on factions in the party as Resolution No. 12 of the Tenth Party Congress in 1921. It was passed in the morning session on 16 March 1921. Supporters of Trotsky sometimes claim that this ban was intended to be temporary, but there is no language in the discussion at the Tenth Party Congress suggesting such. The group of democratic centralism was a group in the Soviet Communist Party who advocated different concepts of party democracy. Topic: <laughs> Arguments for. In On Party Unity, Lenin argued that democratic centralism prevents factionalism. He argued that factionalism leads to less friendly relations among members and that it can be exploited by enemies of the party. By the Brezhnev period, democratic centralism was described in the 1977 Soviet Constitution as a principle for organizing the state. The Soviet state is organized and functions on the principle of democratic centralism, namely the electiveness of all bodies of state authority from the lowest to the highest, their accountability to the people, and the obligation of lower bodies to observe the decisions of higher ones. Democratic centralism combines central leadership with local initiative and creative activity and with the responsibility of each state body and official for the work entrusted to them. The democratic centralist principle extended to elections in the Soviet Union. All communist countries were, either de jure or de facto, one-party states. In most cases, the voters were presented with a single list of unopposed candidates, which usually won 90% or more of the vote. In some countries, those who voted against the lone candidate on the ballot could face serious reprisals. Topic China Democratic centralism is also stated in Article 3 of the present Constitution of the People's Republic of China, Article 3. The state organs of the People's Republic of China apply the principle of democratic centralism. 
The National People's Congress and the local People's Congresses at different levels are instituted through democratic election. They are responsible to the people and subject to their supervision. All administrative, judicial and procuratorial organs of the state are created by the People's Congresses to which they are responsible and under whose supervision they operate. The division of functions and powers between the central and local state organs is guided by the principle of giving full play to the initiative and enthusiasm of the local authorities under the unified leadership of the central authorities. This idea is translated into the supremacy of the National People's Congress, which represents China's citizens and exercises legislative authority on their behalf. Other powers, including the power to appoint the head of state and head of government, are also vested in this body. Topic see also topic References topic External links on party unity. Vladimir Lenin. On Democratic Centralism and the Regime. Leon Trotsky. Notes on Democratic Centralism. Tony Cliff. June 1968. Bolshevism, Fraudulent Practice of Democratic Centralism. Albert Weisbord, 1976. On Democratic Centralism. Place Magazine, 1982. On Democratic Centralism. Mick Armstrong, 2000. Democratic Centralism. Our view of democratic centralism must change by Paul and Malcolm Sabah.